Or would you look at that? The unofficial creepy clown guy of YouTube making a video about a movie called Gags the Clown. I bet no one saw that coming. Gags the Clown takes the idea of a found footage movie and goes, yeah, what if we did that, but more. And by more, I mean create a found footage movie with about a thousand different characters who all just happen to be vlogging their daily lives for that sweet, sweet YouTube revenue. And a movie that my disk drive simply refuses to read, so this very responsibly sourced and totally not dubious 720p rip will just have to do as we pretend that the pixelation is merely an implemented feature aimed at enhancing your immersion. The movie begins by showing us someone who clearly needs to upgrade their CCTV cameras as it's flickering all over the place before suddenly we see a clown appear and just as quickly disappear. I've seen PowerPoint presentations with smoother frame rates. We then see a group of people, Corey, Ashley and John, apparent haters of fun as they come across their car filled with balloons and aren't exactly overjoyed by the sight of plastic filled with air. They turn to notice a clown standing there and looking like he's about to ask if they've got any games on their phone. They refer to the clown as gags and sickened by the sight of joy, John confronts and threatens the clown due to resurfacing childhood trauma involving balloon animals. He gets back into his car to leave, but as he's trying to, John begins to violently cough up blood and choke, looking like he loves his woman every day of the month. They're forced to stop as a car is blocking them from leaving, and Corey turns to see bloodied handprints appear from below the window before he then takes off running, because screw his friends. And for a few frames, we see Gags the Clown, which apparently for Corey is a horrific enough sight to cause him to spontaneously implode. But the thing is, Corey could have easily avoided this entire situation if he'd clicked the link in this video's description and checked out today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Because Gags doesn't kill cool people. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome, top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Every month, they introduce their members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing and more, all based on a preference quiz that you fill out. Every box of awesome has about $70 worth of goods inside, but only costs you a fraction of the value. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside, so you can decide that if you'd like to 1. Keep it, 2. Swap it out for a different box, or free, skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based in the US. Two standouts for me are the Weekender bag with its stylish and functional carry-all, spacious enough for me to fit all of my totally not severed body parts in. There's also the Slash bag for all my, uh, well, slashing. Safely and responsibly, of course, with the Japanese-style Nata tool and sheath. So get 20% off your first box of awesome and 100% off chances of ending up like Corey. Disclaimer, bespoke posts cannot guarantee customers' safety from self-implosion. What you get up to in your own time is your own business. Click the link in the description and enter code BIGWILL20 at bespokepost.com slash BIGWILL20. It then cuts to a news broadcast showing a segment called Gags Watch, hosted by a woman named Heather, as it shows videos and pictures of multiple gag sightings, as well as first-hand witness accounts. It then cuts between a myriad of different groups, because this movie's assigning you homework, and it's your job to memorize its cast. We've got Heather and her cameraman, three teenagers, Sarah, her boyfriend Tyler, and their third wheel, Chris, two police officers, Renard and Gruber, and Charles a podcast host and ex-marine, along with his cameraman, as Charles talks about his disdain for children's entertainers and his desire for them to be culled. The three teenagers arrive at a house party, and Tyler plays the incredibly fun game known as stack a pile of cat feces on someone. Ah, memories. They suddenly hear a loud banging noise coming from outside of the house, and no, it's not your mother, a different kind of banging noise, before looking out the window to see a clown run past, as you can see Gags watching from the distance. The clown then enters the house and absolutely terrifies one of their friends, Liz, but it's just revealed to be Chris in a costume, as it's just a prank, bro. We then see body cam footage from a different police officer coming across a stopped car in the middle of the road, and either this is an Alzheimer's patient who's forgotten where the Walmart parking lot is, or something nefarious is afoot. After the officer finds a man sitting in the driver's seat, wearing a clown mask while being unresponsive to his commands, the police officer decides to pull his gun out, because how dare he ignore him, before the masked man gets out of the car covered in blood, and just like that time my dad went to the store to get some milk, 
it cuts away from the scene and immediately forgets it ever existed. Back with the podcast host. He has this incredibly smart idea to announce an upcoming hate crime committed towards a children's entertainer, and tells his viewers that if his stream gets 500 shares, then he'll head out there and find the clown for some vigilante justice. And by head out there for some vigilante justice, I mean create this week's most viewed live leak video. We then see body cam footage from a different police officer, as apparently this movie's got a thing for expendable law enforcement, as she's investigating a broken into movie theatre, and after hearing a loud bang, draws her weapon in hopes of executing any Marvel fans. Footage of gags begins to play on the big screen, which is just a little narcissistic if you ask me, and she turns around to see him sitting there watching it. Not exactly enthusiastic with her letterboxed rating, Gag suddenly appears in front of her for a kiss, before it cuts away as we hear the muffled sound of her screams, as apparently he's got really bad breath. Charles quickly reaches his goal of 500 shares, and for his 1000 subscriber special, he plans to execute a man on camera. I wonder if that'll make it onto this year's YouTube Rewind. He shows off all of his fancy big boy toys, more than likely compensating for his little toy in his trousers, before we see, back at the party, Officer Renard and Gruber show up due to reports of underage drinking because apparently they hate fun and adolescent liver failure. Sarah's caught by Renard, who just happens to be her stepmom, as everybody makes a run for it. And after being told by her law enforcement stepmother to go home, Sarah immediately proceeds to not go home as her, Tyler, and Chris meet up again as they have the well thought out and smart idea to terrorise the town while dressed as a clown, just as there happens to be a man walking around armed with a small penis and a gun. We then see body cam footage of another police officer, as so far this movie entirely consists of 80% random body cam footage, as we see an officer responding to a call from a concerned mother. Her daughter encountered gags previously in the night, and he taught her the really cool trick of self-mutilation. The officer finds her in the bathroom with the bottom half of her face cut open, because apparently she thought her mouth was too small. Sarah, Tyler and Chris are having some classic teenage fun by disturbing the peace and traumatising the locals, as Chris sprints after people dressed as the clown, corners women in elevators, and startles unsuspecting victims. And after having a light bit of fun by making people think they're going to die, Chris moves out of the way of the camera to reveal gags down the end of an alleyway, watching them as he doesn't really like their impression very much. He's less of a boo scared you guy, and more of a turn you inside out guy. Renard and Gruber are called to a restaurant to investigate a suspected break-in, and as they begin searching the premises, they hear a noise coming from further into the building. And upon further investigation, they make an absolutely terrifying, gut-wrenching discovery. A bald man. It appears to be John from the beginning of the movie, as he's decided it's time for a drastic change and has given himself a permanent makeover with a knife. He proceeds to walk towards them, but as Officer Gruber has a serious issue with his personal space being invaded, he shoots him dead. At least that's what they think, because despite confirming that he is indeed past his expiration date, after turning around to call it in, circus music begins to play and they turn around to find him standing. But after staring at them for a few seconds, he says nah and turns around and walks the opposite way, because getting shot again would really suck. After Renard sprints out of the building after this unusually fast speedwalker, he seems to have completely disappeared into thin air, before Gags appears on the CCTV camera as she turns the corner. Back with Heather and her cameraman, Heather gets dropped from Gag's watch due to a news competitor interviewing Charles when Heather really should have got to it first. But despite this, she isn't exactly a fan of taking orders from her, you know, boss. So she insists to her cameraman that they carry on, as she thinks Charles is going to try and kill Gags, and that would make for some really great TV, because violence is fun. It once again cuts back to the teenagers, giving me whiplash in the process from all of this jumping around the place, as we see that they've decided to head to the fair to scare people, right as Sarah spots Gags in the distance, being all weird as he follows around a group of underage kids. She thinks it's Chris, but apparently Chris is an Olympic tier sprinter, and one of those people who get changed really fast, as suddenly he walks right into frame while not wearing a clown costume at all. Renard and Gruber realise that their run-in with a certain follically challenged man isn't just a self-contained incident, as they find out that multiple people have all been admitted to hospital with similar symptoms to self-mouth enlargement and baldness. And just like the man Renard was pursuing, they've too all mysteriously disappeared. Back at the fair, the friends come across one of Gag's signature black balloons, and as Tyler takes a picture of Chris posing with it, it suddenly pops, showering him in a strange white substance. And not the fun strange white substance that pops out of something. Meanwhile, Charles on the hunt 
comes across Gags, and after Gags commits the egregious sin of not immediately answering him, Charles reacts in a perfectly sane and reasonable manner by pulling out his gun and aiming it at him. I told you he was compensating for something. Suddenly they're distracted by the harrowing sound of children's circus music playing, and when they look back, Gags has dramatically disappeared, as he did always have a thing for the theatrics. Back with the trio of friends, since being exposed to this mysterious white powder, Chris begins violently throwing up colours that shouldn't be coming from the human body, as he's a loser who can't handle his drugs. And as they're driving home, with Chris essentially continuing to die in the back seat, they drive past Charles and his cameraman as they're arguing about Charles being too chicken to commit a murder for the clout. Just as Charles spots a balloon left for him, saying tag you're it Charlie, and clearly being greatly offended at the sight of vandalised party decor, he once again reacts to this in a perfectly sane and reasonable manner by grabbing his gun. Knowing where Charles is heading, Tyler has Sarah turn the car around as we see Charles arrive outside of an abandoned warehouse. Charles proceeds to go live, because it's always a great idea to announce your crimes before you commit them, and Heather seeing the stream and recognising the location, heads towards him in hopes of filming some content of a guy committing a murder while also filming some content. And despite suffering from the little known condition known as currently dying, Tyler makes Chris put on the clown costume to mess with Charles. You know, the guy who's made it pretty clear that he'd like to kill a clown. Tyler eventually decides that maybe he should be the one in the costume, and Sarah, understandably realising that all of this is a terrible idea, wants to have no part in it anymore, and leaves. So Tyler reacts in a mature and understandable way by telling her that he was only with her so he could take her virginity. I got what I wanted out of you anyways! Another V card to add to the collection! <coughs> Give it back, dude. Not only is Charles, his cameraman, Heather, her cameraman, Chris and Tyler heading towards the warehouse, Officer Renard and Gruber are too, after getting a call about suspicious activity in the area. Yes, yeah, suspicious activity of a man waving a gun around while incessantly looking for a clown. They all arrive at the location, and things begin to take a rather strange turn, as the carnival music can be heard again, as we see that Chris and Tyler have been separated, just as Chris turns the corner to see someone standing there, bleeding from all of the orifices that you really shouldn't be bleeding from. A stack of boxes is suddenly knocked over, startling Charles and the cameraman, before suddenly someone screams help in the distance and sprints towards Charles while wearing a clown costume. Triggered by the disgusting sound of someone daring to ask for his help, Charles plants one in his chest to put an end to it. Two kills off the UAV, Charles drops the gun and begins to break down after the realisation of what he's just done has hit. He admits to lying about his heroic military past and says that he was just deployed as a mechanic and never actually saw any combat. The extent of his combat is hitting 10th prestige in Modern Warfare 2. Officer Renard and Gruber show up responding to the gunshot and Charles and his cameraman make a run for it. Renard confirms the clown's death and realises that it's Chris, Sarah's boyfriend. Well, ex-boyfriend now I guess. The officers split up to find the people responsible for this heinous clown hate crime, and while Gruber is sprinting down a hallway, Gags suddenly appears in front of him for an IRL jump scare before disappearing again before he can really process what's just happened. Renard then finds a room filled with balloons and spots Gags in the corner before he disappears again as he finds it absolutely hilarious to mess with cops. This whole time, Heather and her cameraman have been searching for the source of the circus music, until eventually they discover a room with a large lit up circus tent. They enter the tent to find a group of people sitting there in complete silence, until eventually they all turn around to reveal their mutilated faces. Renard, searching for the suspects, falls through an unstable floor as we see gags for a few frames and hits the floor with such force that it knocks her out of the story because she's never heard from again. Gruber chases Charles and his cameraman into the tent as well, and almost immediately, despite broadcasting to thousands of people all night telling them what he aims to do, Charles pretends that he didn't do it and attempts to pin the murder on the cameraman. Which is fine apparently, but as soon as Charles calls him white trash, well then he stepped too far and the guy pulls out a gun. He shoots Charles right in front of an armed police officer, which results in him getting shot as well, and Heather's cameraman, not exactly being a fan of witnessing two people die in front of him, puts the camera down and runs away, because he certainly doesn't get paid enough to deal with this. So Heather, being the strong, independent woman that she is, picks up the camera and films as Gags appears in the room and the audience stands up. A balloon pops over Renard's head, before it cuts to a different news broadcast being filmed outside of the warehouse. Catching Heather running out of the building and screaming, they film as Gag suddenly appears in front of her, 
handing her a balloon that resembles herself. After he gives it to her, he turns around to walk away, as Heather begins laughing at the absolutely hilarious sight of a killer clown and a balloon, before suddenly exploding into a pile of human pulp, as a chunk of Heather meat lands in the reporter's hair. And the movie then comes to an end, leaving me questioning exactly what it is that I've just witnessed, and what exactly just happened for the entire duration, as I am deeply confused and slightly concerned. Gags is cool and all of that, but his inclusion in the movie isn't the big mystery. The real unsolved mystery of the story is what happened to Heather's cameraman. Is he okay? Before we finish up, I'd like to just give a big thank you to all YouTube members and patrons. People who every month help contribute towards the channel in times when YouTube can be very finicky in whether or not if they're actually going to monetize my videos or not. So starting off with the YouTube members, a big thank you to Lori Resendiz, Cal Ballinger, Billy Bad Cables, Gary Braunbeck, Psycho, Cobe Redbeam, Ex Gerticus, Mike Viorlik, Science Gaming, Goobs AU, Julie Not 666, R. Mendez, David Gailanas, Voltia, Brian Walker, The House of Shaitan Gaming and Shorts, David Winter, Denovan Farrell, Mr. Devneels, Roni2135, and Alexander Jablonski. And heading over to Patreon, a big thank you to Dom, Hunters263, Rebecca Pitts, Benz, Martin Brannan, Natasha Twyman, Jared C. Bees, Pascal Mathis, Richard McGowan III, Macy J, Chris, Dennis, Jerry McSendy, Ashley L. Wintz, Christopher Butsky, Joshua Torres, Remy, Fire Goes Fast, Josh Brooks, Dyreem, Robert Zirwek, Dark Shiva, Josh Hannon, Billy Whitaker, Jay Slows, Daniel Dickinson, G Source, Fatty Ghost, Miguel, Owen, Mackenzie Riley, Bryson, John Smith, Madrick, Lyru, Stephen Weber, Channing Mars, Benjamin Bronson, Paul Bartlett, Reese Heinrich, Toast is Hot One, Nasdan, Todd, Benedict Garum, FX666, AJ Castro, Robbie Walk, Alex FRW, Scopexi, Ethan Holmes, DeAndre Fernandez, Cal Ballinger, Mitch Brandman, Sam Rasmussen, Averages 2, Augustina, Cedric Spear, Salome Rios, Matthias Jensen, Sergei Maslavovsky, Fentom, Edgy Boy K, John Edano, Cloda, Fake Tom Jones, Kevin Basement, Giovanni Montahano, Harry Smith, Patrick Ferrara, Tyler, Jono, and Dave McDade. So once again, thank you so much to all YouTube members and patrons, and thank you to everyone else for watching.